Muito bem, Nerds, eu estou aqui com o Dan Bunting, da Treyarch, vamos falar sobre Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Dan, tell us about what you do at Treyarch. Uh, so my, I'm, named, I'm Dan Bunting, and I am the multiplayer game director. And my job is basically, you know, I oversee the entire project, uh, provide direction, and, and make sure that all of the components of the game are coming together to, you know, fully realize the vision of what we're trying to do, um, and make sure that you know that's carried through art, animation, sound, all the engineering technology that we develop, um, the design, everything, just making sure it all comes together into a, a holistic experience that really expresses the goals of what we're trying to do with the game. All right, so you told me before that this was a three-year project. Yes. So when, when you sit down on the, first, on the very first meeting about the project, what do you discuss first? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> um, you know, generally we just we start talking about, um, you know, the, one of the first things that we try to decide is what time frame do we want to, what you know, kind of time frame do we want to be in because uh, that really de that de defines the technology that you're going to use and build into the game. So, you know, your gameplay mechanics are all kind of built around whatever that technology of that time period is. So, with Black Ops 3, you know, we knew we were going to do Black Ops 3. That was something that we had settled on in the beginning. Um, and the, you know, we do we, nef we definitely knew that we wanted to go further into the future than we had been on Black Ops 2. And the reason for that is just that it gives us so much freedom to bring more innovation to the table for um, new me gameplay mechanics and all kinds of um, different kind of gadgets and just fiction and visuals of the world. And so we wanted to have that, to be, to be able to explore that creativity and bring something new for our fans. And that's, that's always important that we're pushing ourselves to innovate more. By playing the game, uh, uh, having played all the Black Ops games and all the, the Call of Duty uh, franchise games, uh, I noticed that the last year we had uh, Advanced Warfare is not a Treyarch game, right? Uh, but you know, they brought us into the future, and you were also bringing the, your part of the franchise into the future. So, have had you had any conversation or dialogue with the other team about not doing the same things, about exploring different technologies? Yeah, we definitely met early on um, to understand exactly what it was that they were doing. Um, you know, we, we're our own independent studios, and so we each kind of develop our own flavor of Call of Duty. And with Black Ops, it's its own sub-brand, so we kind of have the freedom to build off of our Black Ops uh, legacy. Um, but we also wanted to know what they were doing with their with their gameplay, their tech, and and their fiction. And we just look for opportunities to separate and, and make sure that we're doing something different that hasn't been done before. Um, because you know that their game is going to come out a year before ours, so you want to understand, you know, what, what are the gamers going to have, what are they going to see, what are they going to expect, um, and then you can, you know, you can sort of adapt that way. Well, what about multiplayer? It's, it's every every year you have you have this challenge of, of making it making it new, making it awesome and different from from what has been done in the past. How do you approach this challenge? Uh, you know, we always we push ourselves. We really want to make sure that we're um, bringing something new to the table for the fans. And you know, we wouldn't be satisfied if we were just iterating on the last game. We have to build off of the last game and bring something very new. Um, you know, when we came off of Black Ops 2, we you know it was a successful game. People really enjoyed it. They liked playing it. Um, uh, there was a, there was a, it felt very balanced and polished. And to go from there to what we did next, we really wanted to figure out the core mechanics what are the what's the core combat loop and take that a step further because that core combat loop is what's so unique to Call of Duty that other games just don't do and we took that and we said you know what are all the things that kind of get in the way or make the game not as satisfying to players and you, you think about things like um, you know sprint being limited so you know you, you push the thumbstick and you run out of sprint you have a very short amount of time you can sprint or you can take a perk and you can sprint longer but we wanted to, to not make the game feel like the game was stopping you. We wanted the players to have the freedom and the power to stop themselves, to control their own pace of the flow. And so we just started, you know, removing those barriers. And, and you know, other things we looked at were like mantling. Mantling uh, takes you out of the action. Put your gun away and you have to press the A button. You have to face the mantle to get over it. And you might be engaged in combat with a guy over there that it, it just blocks you. You know, it makes it so it's not it's not as fluid and it's not as easy it's not as easy to to engage in those combat scenarios. We, wanted to, we just wanted to remove those barriers and make it feel more fluid for players. Uh, I noticed that uh, we had about nine specialist classes in the multiplayer. Yeah. That's a lot, man. I love this. I love that you have this 
a whole set of different uh, abilities and special abilities that you can use with each character. So, but this makes it also difficult to balance all of those guys into into the same uh, to the same game. So, how was that creating so many different specialist classes? Well, first of all, I'll say it was a lot of fun. I mean, that was it's a feature that we have had uh, just so much fun just being creative with because you know we started with these kind of archetypal personalities and we started building narratives around them. We started building uh, concept art for what they looked like. And we started talking about what kind of gameplay mechanics really kind of extend and, and express the character and the personality of that character. So it's been a lot of fun as far as an exploration for us. As far as balancing goes, I don't really have too many concerns about that. I mean, it's like, you know, we're no strangers to game the complexities of gameplay balance. You know, we've we've had a game that's had 40 different weapons in the past. I think Black Ops 2 was like 40 or 41 different weapons. And, uh, you know, you have to balance all those against one another. and so. You know, balance is something that we just do. You know, we collect stats, we figure out what are the patterns of behavior. We look at those stats, we tweak the numbers. You know, we take, uh, we, we play test the game every day. So we're always constantly just taking feedback from the team about how things feel. Um, you see pretty quickly if, if a weapon is overpowered because people start using it all the time. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a natural thing, right? Yeah. People are, they gravitate towards the thing that's going to make them most successful in the game. No. So, so it's, Sorry. It's, not, it's not a challenge for us. I mean, it's just something we have to do. So. There's one specialist class that you said is Brazilian background. Yes. It's Brazilian background character, right? Yes. Tell me more about it. Uh, so uh, the Outrider is a specialist that uh, her background, her name is Alessandra Castillo. She comes from a Brazilian background. Um, you know, we, as part of our world fiction, we pulled a lot of um, little bits and pieces of our world fiction that we had developed in the first year um, through our narrative process. And we just like looked at, you know, what is the what does the world look like in our point in our time in the future? And we said these the specialist characters, they're not specifically drawn from the campaign, but they're drawn from that same universe of what's happening in the world. And so we looked at, you know, as part of our, our hero faction, the Winslow Accord in the campaign, there's a, an alliance with Brazil because Brazil, you know, you know, we look we do a lot of real world research and you know Brazil is sort of a country that's coming up and and and, and having a lot of success in uh, world commerce and trade and and political relationships and so we just you know that was a it was a great place to draw uh, a character out of and um, she's a pretty cool character I think she you know her fiction is that she was raised in the favela kind of watched from the rooftops all the the gang turf wars unfold below on the ground and that sort of gave her this ability of, of observation and so she's she's an she's like a hunter she's a she's a, she's a specialist in observation and she has that 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 bow and arrow that you know she pulls back and so she's kind of like a ranged attack sort of character, and and I think um, you know she's a lot of fun. She's actually my personal favorite. Um, really? Yeah, because when you play with the specialists and their weapons and abilities, it actually kind of it changes your play style when you get those when you when you get them. And when you use her ability of vision pulse, you feel like you're hunting. You're hunting the enemy down at that point in time. And when you use the crossbow or the sorry the bow and arrow, you're like you know you're you're looking for targets and you're hunting. And you, you sort of you start to play like the character's persona, which is I think is a really fun thing. Yeah, I guess this was uh, what brought to my attention this is not uh, not only the loadout that you change for each character, but you change the whole personality and the whole the, the whole way that you play the game. Yeah, so you know each character has their own fiction, their own backstory. They've all got their own voice. Um, and every, you know, each of their gameplay mechanics is custom designed for them and their personality, so that they extend that that persona through gameplay. Okay. Uh, any last uh, last thoughts that you can share with us? Uh, what, what you know, for, for our audiences? What, what is your final expectation of what would they like about uh, Black Ops Three? Well, we, you know, we just hope that the fans really love it. Um, you know, it's a Treyarch game. This is really, you know, if you liked Black Ops 2, I think you're going to really love Black Ops 3. Um, you, I think you'll definitely see the Treyarch sort of lineage in, you know, in this game. And, and while there's a lot of new features and mechanics and things that are different, I think there's a lot that's going to feel familiar to you as well. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> Once again. Thank you, Thank you guys.